Seven years ago, uh, we, we had, as a market, we didn't have 150 million. So in terms of access to a market, it has changed tremendously. We are today, we represent today, we are part of a market of 150 million people. In terms of capital also, movement of capital, in terms of investment, clearly, we've become much more attractive, uh, both for investment, but also uh, attractive of different skills. We started the implementation of the custom union. We joined in 2007, and already in 2009, we started implementing. We're having those one-stop border with open and working extended hours. As, as we continue now, with the pace of the integration so far, would you say that it is sufficient? Is Rwanda happy with the integration so far? Or there's still a lot that needs to be done? A lot, quite honestly, a lot has been achieved. And, and I will summarize that in this way. In terms of being part of EEC has increased our attractiveness yes. as an economy. And it has increased our competitiveness, the competitiveness of our economy. And we would like also to make sure that, well, those skills that are being built have access to the East African market. And therefore, we would like, we are also getting this opportunity to call all of us, all of us, all the five partner states, to really just uh, fast track the implementation. We want to touch on uh, a bit more hard hitting questions. Uh, there, is still, there still exists some challenges in doing business within the region and we can see that the most active have been the three countries, Uganda, Rwanda and Kenya. Now, is, uh, is their political goodwill strong enough to resolve some of these issues that are, are faced by the EAC over and over again? It is, uh, it is clear to all that the, what we need today, it's really a sense of urgency. The returns cannot be seen through signed protocols, through uh, agreed decisions, through directives that are not implemented. Even open to what we are doing, uh, open it to non-members that may be attracted into joining the implementation, into joining some of these integration projects. And here, of course, come to mind South Sudan. Yes. Mm. Now, uh, constitutionally, or uh, in terms of uh, policies within a country, let's just come back to Rwanda. Each country normally has a raft of legislation that they need to uh, get with in terms of making, uh, that they need to deal with in getting the community moving. How many of these laws are pending uh, here in Rwanda? Well, we have many of them. I, I really, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have a committee that, we, that work uh, on, uh, on a very regular basis on what we call the harmonization and the, the approximation of, of our laws. The value of having a common market scorecard that is put together, which is basically uh, really a work of just uh, going through different laws in different sectors. The value of that is to have an independent party that give us regularly, uh, provide us with a mirror, a snapshot, a regular snapshot of where we stand, what needs to be changed, but that is not enough. We can't stop at the snapshot at just having, knowing what is happening or not happening. We need to make things happen. Import and export uh, put together uh, today, East Africa is, uh, is really our, our second uh, biggest market, yes. both for import and export. The first uh, still, uh, uh, the first remain uh, the European Union taken again as a block. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and the second is East Africa. So this shows you, and East Africa stands uh, as of, uh, I would say, as of last year. East Africa was uh, more or less 30, 30 -ish, in the 30 percent of, uh, of, of the share of our trade. Okay. Mm. There were two major issues that were being touched on. Number one was transport and communication. Now, we already established a one network region uh, within the EAC, and that was a big move for the bloc. But now, transportation still remains a major problem, whereby we see that flights in between the EAC are still as expensive, if not more expensive, than flights from other countries inside Africa. So, what is being done to ensure that at least there, there is regularization of the flight fares in between different countries? It is not a geographical matter, it is a policy matter. Yes. 
and, uh, and countries have difficult access to, to the sea only because transit countries make it difficult and predictable and expensive yes. to transit. Uh, within the EEC, uh, the countries, uh, the partner states, are today in a process of discussing as well how the prices could be brought down, including by really having one airspace uh, area. Uh, looking at one airspace area, what, what it will call for uh, looking in detail into those regulations, but more than the regulations. What will make economic sense, uh, while at the same time really making it uh, accessible for for, for yes. more citizens and growing the market of those who are able to travel by air. Yes, thank you very much uh, for that. We are really keen on that response. Now, we want to look at it from a broader perspective out of East Africa. The three blocks, EAC, Comesa, and ACDC, are currently uh, embarked on a process of establishing the free trade area. What is your view on this uh, free trade area? Within blocks, that progress has been made. If you take the ECOWAS as well, people in the ECOWAS move, within the ECOWAS move freely. Now we need to move one step further, is to say between our different blocks, why can't we agree? Why can't we just do the same? We really do believe in a pragmatic approach. Uh, we will succeed in that precisely if we accelerate the implementation of our own commitments within individual economic communities. The large free trade area that we want to create at the continental level will be made much easier once we would have implemented our commitment at uh, 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 at community, at a community level. All right, now as we wind up, uh, Rwanda, given Rwanda's position in the East African community, what integration processes or events should we look forward to in 2015 and beyond? Well, you, you, you will see us continue, continue to, to, you will see us uh, probably pushing again uh, harder on the implementation of the different freedoms that are in the common market protocol. You will also see, uh, uh, see uh, us uh, really push along with other countries uh, on the, the, some of the key infrastructure projects. So the, the railway, the railway that is that would be a key project for us. It is already there, starting the, at the preliminary phases of the studies, but also the f putting the finances together, uh, putting uh, the money together. The countries have agreed to work together to put the money together. That for us is an essential project, and why it is an essential project. Development partners, but also businesses, are picking now interest. In, uh, in what it will represent in terms of uh, business opportunities in a very fast-growing region. But in addition to infrastructure, uh, harmonization of regulations that will enable us to in and actually open uh, services between our different countries, that will continue to be a, a big focus. And we will, of course, continue to make sure that um, all the different freedoms that will have maximum returns uh, for the ordinary citizen will continue to focus on those.